You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. And please make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. I almost drove off the road today. I was so upset. And, you know, it takes a lot for me to really get upset because, you know, I'm a positive thinking person when it comes to these things in the news. And and as depressing as they are, we've got Donald Trump, right? So we know everything in the end is going to be okay. I, I got off the radio this morning and I got in my car, waited for the rain to stop, got in my car. And I turn on Fox News. That was my first mistake, okay? And that is not something I normally do. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know what possessed me to turn on Fox News. I I really do not normally do that. I'm usually making calls, call you, Kathy, call Steve Kane or do business, call something. You know, I'm not usually – and I turned on Fox News, and I am so glad that I did because what Fox News did was so far over the line – that they really need to be called out. I couldn't believe what they did. Pence addressed a group. He gave a speech at the Young America's Foundation's Mm. National Conservative Student Conference. Enough words in that name? Gee whiz. (laughs) Pence Pence gave a speech to this young never-Trumper conference. Fox News carried to the speech in its entirety mm. live. You know, now, they're uh, making yeah. a huge mistake. Oh, yes. Hitching their horse up to his post or whatever oh, the yes. expression is. Huge. We all know Paul Ryan is so far up Pence's butt. Um, he loves the guy. And uh, so Paul Ryan is pulling the strings here. Yep. If they think that they can sell Mike Pence uh, to MAGA, Good they luck gotta, they, to anybody. They, this, to I anybody. think, is uh, going to be the final nail well, in their coffin. Well, let me tell is, you. Is working with this clown. Let me tell you why it ticks me off. What a dumb off. idea. A C- couple things here. First off, when have you ever, 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 ever seen a speech given by a former vice president that was carried live on television? I've never even seen such a thing never, happen before. Never. Right? And and that's one. But the thing that really burns me is that Fox News will not carry the Trump rallies. They will not carry the Trump rallies. And, you know, President Trump with Kerry Lake, for example, on Friday night, that was very newsworthy yeah. because they got they got that conviction of Bannon. Right. So they should at least be mo- even though they hate the guy for mm-hmm. some reason, they, they, they should at least be carrying it because he could be talking about Bannon, which is a news story that they've been covering. And and to carry Pence, and I did listen to it. Um, I was in the car, and I did listen to it. I wanted to hear what he had to say. And he was talking about pro-life things and anti-woke. And the, th- and, and the things he said mm-hmm. are things that all of us in MAGA agree with, okay? Yeah. Don't be fooled. And, and Fox News, let me tell you, this really, t- this really says something about Fox News. They think we're stupid. They think we're – the Fox News Channel – let me tell you something. Fox News Channel is number one. It should be Newsmax, okay? It should be number one. But they're number one. Mm-hmm. They're not number one because of them. They're number one because of us. And, and, and I'll tell you this. Fox News went on the air in 1994, and not many people watched it until the 2000 recount in Florida. And Fox News, when they had the slogan, we report, you decide, which they've since dropped. They, don't, they haven't said that in years. Fox News reported what was going on in Florida in the 2000 recount when the other media was not. And I was down there every day at the counting rooms. They were counting the ballots down the street from where Kathy and I lived. Is when we, you know, we weren't married that long. Maybe four, four years or so, three years. And um, I remember seeing Republicans almost in tears mm-hmm. during breaks. Go, William Lajeunesse was working for Fox News here in Broward County covering that. People would go up to him and say, thank you. I did not know about Fox News. Mm-hmm. Thank you for covering. You know, you're our voice. And, and now look what they've become. They're, they're worse than CNN. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why they're worse than CNN. 
CNN tells you they're a bunch of liberals. Fox News is pretending to be something else. It's like the Lincoln Project, you know, and it's, what they it, do is they they're very sneaky because yeah they they're like wolf and wolves in sheep's clothing because what they do is they they pepper in stories that appeal to MAGA and they cover things that attack Joe Biden yes and tell the truth about Joe Biden and what's going on there with the laptop and all this and they have Miranda Devine and all these people on there like yes great this is good there nobody are people else there is talking we like. about this. yeah sure there's people there you like but then what they do is they sneak in. Other people, while you're watching, while your defenses are the down. never Trumpers, and they, yeah, and 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 they try to 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 get in with you that way when you're, you know what I mean, when you're just all calm and relaxed, and it's really a shame. I'm curious to know um, if people are going to uh, turn off Fox and Friends. You should stop watching Fox and Friends and watch Brian on the radio or listen to Brian on the radio at six in in the morning. Or, much or better, watch me on YouTube or on YouTube. Much better. Um, yes. But because uh, he said that they monkeyed around with the poll numbers and all this, which I do believe they're Trump really, um, you know, they are now in full swing with uh, their anti Trumpism and, and trying to keep him from running again. Now, you guys remember they're really going at it. Barack Obama said a terrible thing about Republicans once when he said that we. We cling to our guns and our Bibles, mm-hmm. and he said it was such disgust. They killed him out of the guns and their Bibles. Like either of those are bad things. That's how Fox News thinks of us. Fox yeah. News Pure disdain. thinks that we're a bunch of white trash, Yahoo's. married to our cousins, out of deliverance, yeah. and we're just a bunch of idiots. And you know, this is a very interesting thing about Fox. And one day someone will write a tell-all book about this. Fox News used to be – Awesome. They really did. And, and, and I know things happen with Roger Ailes and things, but they were when, – when they first became number one after two, the 2000 election, they were un, unbelievable – except Neil Cavuto. He I think it would be sucked. a good documentary for Dinesh to do. What happened The to rise and fall of Fox News. Yeah, Fox News. How it, they turned on their audience. And, and let me tell you something. What they did today I, – I mean I really take that yeah. as a betray- – A slap in the face. You know, here, here's here's the thing. Okay, I, I was I, I've talked to people about this, and I and I know a lot of you understand this, but a lot of people don't understand what I mean when I say mm-hmm. this. But I want to explain this because it's important to understand where these buttes. <laughs> I go watch my Trump likes to. Say I know that. we're on the internet, and I can say anything I want, you can. But, but I don't. I choose not to use profanity. I save that for others. But, um. These buttes over at at Fox News, mm. th- this was the biggest betrayal ever. Putting putting Pence on today was a big f u to those so. of us who made Fox number one. Now, but this is what I what I tell people sometimes that they don't understand. All of these jerks, Lincoln Project, Kellyanne Conway's husband, Lincoln Project, Fox News, what they did today, mm-hmm. Liz Cheney. They don't think they're bad guys. They think they're saving us, the country, and the party. They think they're good guys. And I know I use this example sometimes. I, Benedict Cumberbatch was on an interview once. And he said this, and it, and it really opened up my eyes mm-hmm. to these creeps. He was playing a villain in something. I don't remember what the movie was. He, he was giving an interview, and they asked Maybe him, Star Trek? Maybe. He played Khan. When he played Khan. Oh, yeah, it's probably yeah. blocked it out. That was awful. But he was he was doing an interview on one of the talk shows, entertainment shows, about playing a villain. They said, how do you play a villain? And Benedict Cumberbatch said, he says, the key to playing a villain is this. The villain never thinks they're the villain. The villain thinks they are the hero of the story. So when I play a villain, I'm the hero. And, and that really woke me up a lot. Liz Cheney, Paul Ryan, Fox News, all these people, they think they're heroes and that we're the villains. And I think it's important to understand that about these people. That's that's how sick they are. You know, President Trump, the reason they hate President Trump mm-hmm. is he upset their scam in Well, Washington. and what Trump says, it's not just that they hate him. They hate us. He's just yes. the conduit they hate the of their hate, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and it's really about – the American people That's right. trying to take their country back and standing up for what we believe in and and for us deciding the path of the country and where it should go, which is this should be this is a country That's by right. the people for the people. 
And they don't like that. They're losing control. And mm-hmm. when Trump got elected, it's like it's like it woke them up to like, holy crap, we don't have as much control mm-hmm. as we thought over these people. They actually slipped one through. And they don't want that to ever, ever happen again, especially him. But everything they have tried, everything they have tried has failed. And it, it has failed because our support of him has never waned. And also it has failed because everything they've said is built on lies and mistruths and and made up stories and made up evidence and nothing they have said has been real. And not just the Russia hoax, everything, everything. And I think some of these people are so stupid. They're true believers. And I think they're just being fed lies by certain groups and they just believe it like the people in the media. At first, I thought they were all in on this Russia thing, but no, they're just useful idiots. They really believe this stuff. And I think when the Mueller report came out, they were just as shocked. They were more shocked than anybody. I think well, that's what Rachel you know Maddow what? had a nervous breakdown. You know what? Like, oh my God, I've been being, I've been lied to for two years uh, here. This this thing with Mike Pence being carried on Fox today, I, I really do feel betrayed by Fox. I know Fox has let us down many times, and I know some people will say, "Why are you surprised? They've done it to us time." Let me tell you why. Okay, let me tell you why. You don't have to be very smart to understand that conservative people hate Mike Pence like the plague, okay? And for them to preempt their morning programming, yeah. which they preempt like that Dana Perina show and everything, those yeah. are big shows. To carry Mike Pence, that's a big deal. That There was an entire Fox News discussion from the corporate level at the boardroom down to the people in the newsroom. And, th- I, and I'm wondering... Are there some people over there at Fox News that are like, this is a bad idea? You know what I would, you know what I would compare it to? Now, he, now Pence was on there talking about pro-life and anti-wokeism, and you'd all agree with what he said. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was trying to, they're, they're trying to convince us that he's okay. They're trying to resurrect Pence. I, you know, I don't understand the thinking behind this. First of all, Pence has, has the personality of a wet sponge, and he is the most unexciting well, isn't person. Isn't SpongeBob a wet sponge? Yeah, he has a lot of personality. I I guess you're right. I shouldn't make that compare because SpongeBob's awesome. He has the personality of a corpse. Okay, that'll work. He has no zero personality. Zero personality. We'll say that. Um, And and for the and they know that MAGA does not like this man. Um, In fact, they did the Turning Point USA with him on the and he got like point zero three approve of uh, who liked him, and that was polling all young people too. Um, I don't understand. What they're trying to accomplish of all here. people, it's why a him? waste. Uh, exactly. Of all people. Why not push up DeSantis? I'll tell you why. It is a waste I'll of tell time and energy. I will it's tell go you absolutely why. nowhere. I will tell you why. I don't get it. But first, I've got a huge announcement from Mike Lindell in my pillow. Then uh, I'll tell you why. That's more important. But remind me of that question because I might forget at, at the end okay. of the, the spot here. Um, I got an email early this morning from Mike Lindell's office. Okay. There is a massive massive special going on. This is a huge one, and it's the lowest price ever on the 3-inch MyPillow mattress topper. With our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, 50% off the MyPillow mattress topper. Kathy and I have been sleeping on our MyPillow 3-inch mattress topper for over a year. It is life-changing. And let me tell you this, getting a well-rested night's sleep is very important for me. I get up in the middle of the night, And I have to be well-rested and energetic to be on the radio first thing in the morning. And you guys hear me. You don't hear me too much, do you? It's the MyPillow 3-inch mattress topper. We got ours because Kathy was having back pains. We got it. And relatively new mattress. And we slept on it one night. And Kathy, your back pain disappeared and never returned. And I have been sleeping the whole night through. Every night, waking up when my alarm wakes up, wakes me up as opposed to waking up hours early, sometimes half hour early, 10 minutes early, two hours early like I used to. The MyPillow 3-inch mattress topper will change your life. Now, it comes in uh, every size mattress there is from twin all the way up to California King and Split King and every size in between. They have an RV queen between. too. We know people that have RVs that have yeah, the RV they, queen. Yeah, that's right. Which is a special size. Um, they make great gifts for your, for your children as well as your kids and grandkids going off to college from those dorm room beds that are awful like sleeping on concrete blocks. You know, I, I've seen Mike Lindell talk about – um, giving your kids uh, an advantage by giving them a good night's sleep That's right. in school and how important it is. And he talked about the mattress topper really helping kids sleep better. 
And, you know, I know when I was in high school, <laughs> I had to get up at six o'clock in the morning. It was not easy. And I did not have a mattress topper. I'll tell you that. But I was always tired and not feeling well and this and that. I always had trouble falling asleep and everything. If you give your kids that, they will sleep better and they will feel better in school, and, I promise you. Yeah, and this this is the lowest price ever, 50% off the three-inch MyPillow mattress topper when you use our promo code at checkout, Kane, K-A-N-E. All right, so, Kathy, you were asking me why Pence of all yeah. people, why Pence? Yeah, it's this, going nowhere. Okay, th- this is why. These sickos in the Never Trumper movement Feed off of one another. They're in a. They're almost like in a cell. They're almost like in a cult. They say we're in a cult. They're yeah. in this anti-Trump cult. Okay? Oh, I agree with you on that. And they, Liz Cheney's their leader. They feed off of each other, and they, they, they don't see the world clearly. So here's their logic in their warped, twisted, never Trumper suffering, Trump derangement syndrome minds. Okay, this is what they think. Who knows Donald Trump better? And what a terrible person he is than his own vice president. And if his own vice president is against him, that's that that'll really reach people. Not I got make I got news for you, okay? No one cares about vice presidents. Very few of them amount to a hill of beans. Most of them do not become presidents. Uh, there there are exceptions to this. Um, R- Richard Nixon was a vice president and. George Bush, but that's um, just because he George, was with Reagan. George I think Bush Reagan was so popular. George Bush only had one term. Yep. It didn't go well. Nope. Lyndon Johnson was vice president, only became president because of the Kennedy assassination. Yeah, exactly. You know, so there have been vice presidents that went on to be president, but it's not as common as people think. They're they're forgotten. Uh, no one cares about them. And and I've never seen a pro- I've never seen a televised speech of any. Former vice president. They don't even care the, of the sitting pr- vice presidents, you know. But they, these never Trumpers in this cell they have, they actually think because Pence was on the inside that he will reach us. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. Now, this, this, this red tsunami that is coming is really a mega tsunami. You know, what they really wanted President Trump to do was take this losing path of, of starting his own MAGA party, a third party. And I'm and President Trump, who is very wise, said, "No, I'm not going to start a MAGA party. I'm going to fix the Republican Party." Very smart move. And he has done it, and that's what he is doing. And, and that's he, and, what they were afraid of. Well, here's what you got to understand, okay? Every two years, one third of the Senate is up for re-election, and the entire House of Representatives is up for re-election. So we have this midterm. With this senile old coot Biden here, right? We got this midterm, so we're going to pick up seats in both houses then. In 2024, President Trump will be on the ballot. We're going to pick up even more seats in both houses. And then we're going to have his midterm and his second term. Yep. We're going to pick up more seats then. Plus, he said he's going to fire 5,000 federal that, employees. 50,000. 50,000, 50, 50, which would be great. And, and then in 2028, we're going to have a, a, our second MAGA president, whoever that may be. I hope it's Ron DeSantis. And there's going to be even more seats. What's happened now with this transgenderism and this wokeism and this grooming and all this craziness that's going on, we are experiencing the complete destruction of the Democrat Party as a major party. They're, the, they are, you know, and the Republican Party. Really both. Well, the Republican Party is becoming no, the MAGA I mean, Party. Well, but the Republican Party that's been around, mm-hmm. you know, you really got to think about it. Trump. Even when he's not in office, is having such an impact on Washington, D.C. And these people cannot help but talk about him. Their entire life revolves around him. They're obsessed with him. And they're actually helping him along because they sound crazier and crazier. And it actually draws people to him because he's like the voice of reason and with all these crazy things. Yes. And what's going to happen is I think— Really, you know, yep. God God always works for the good, okay? And I believe that what's happening is exactly according to God's plan. It is better for Trump to go into office in two years than if he would have stayed. I know yep. we're suffering right now. But the reason it's better, because it has given Trump a unique perspective, okay? He was president. He was just dealt with so much crap. And then he was removed and he went back home 
And he's been able to step back and look at things from a broader viewpoint and really reassess. And he said he's firing all these employees because he knows what's, he understands what's going on now. He's, he, he was able to live in the swamp and then he came out of the swamp and he can look at the swamp from the outside and he knows who he can trust now and who he can't trust. He basically can't trust anybody. Yeah. And I think he made a lot of naive mistakes and I think he would agree with that. He will not make those mistakes again. He's wiser. No. And he knows what they're all about now. And believe me, if they thought he was scary before, wait till he comes in the next time because yeah. he's got all their numbers. That's right. And trust me. You know, just just to finish He knows what's the score is. Just to finish up on this thing with Pence. And this this really really pains me to say cuz I I don't I take our I take our religion more seriously than people think cuz I don't talk about it too much. You know, a lot of these people they like to, you know, like Biden, they wear the religion on the sleeve. I don't like to talk about it too much. Because I don't think that's the way to be. Yeah. But. Um, no, it's not actually. Yeah. Doesn't Jesus say you're not, you know, supposed to be doing all that? He actually says pray in private. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, you're supposed to proselytize and all that. I get that. No, you are. You are. But, but you I, know, not brag. Let me tell you. Pray quietly. I was, you know, I was a big supporter of George W. Bush in both of his elections. And th- I'm so disappointed in him finding out that he he knowingly lied about weapons of mass destruction. One million people have been, died, at least one million people, because of his lies of weapons of mass destruction. Many have been maimed and, and oh, yeah. lives permanently, destroyed. Permanently. You, know, you, know, you know what it's like. And he wow. went around promoting himself as a big Christian. And we were we, – and let me tell you, Kathy and I were such big fans of George Bush. We did not know what G.W. Bush was all about. We really did. After 9-11, it was a – sometime. We became – we weren't Catholic then, and we became members of the Methodist Church because G.W. Bush was a Methodist, and he made such a big deal about being a Christian. And I really question that now because his lie resulted in so many people's deaths, and and that was a lie that he knowingly told to us mm-hmm. because he had some other reasons. And I feel that way about Pence. Pence all, has always made such a big deal about his uh, faith. And I don't be, believe it anymore. I think it's an act. If if he were a Christian man, would he be out there betraying, fact, b- betraying the, the man who he worked under, no, as, who was his president? I don't not. think so. In fact, when Jesus would perform miracles, he would, he would, when he would heal people, he would tell them, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. And of course, the people would go and tell everybody. The reason he did that is because... Jesus was setting an example that when you do good things, you don't go around and brag about it and talk about it. You do, you do things quietly just to be nice, just to do things like that. And and Pence is, like you said, he's not these people that wear their religion on their sleeve and all this stuff and brag about, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. They're fake. They're fake people because then they turn around and create wars that kill people, which makes no sense to me. And this thing with they hide behind their yes. religion. A yeah. lot of people hide behind their religion yes. and they use it, they wield it to their advantage. And you know, I don't Pence is the kind of guy I don't it's understand not. too much. Yeah. He's very quiet. He's not out there. He plays it very close to the vest. And sometimes those are the kind of people you have to trust the least because yes. they, they're too quiet. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Beware of the quiet ones. Um, but this whole thing with uh Fox, if they think that they can influence anything. And get people to like Pence. They're completely deluded. Mm-hmm. They're complete. I could see Trump, but you know, pushing up DeSantis. DeSantis is not going to run. They keep saying DeSantis, DeSantis. <laughs> They're assuming he's planning on running. He's never said that. He's never indicated that, and he will not run against Trump. I can promise you that. He's a young guy, and it's going to happen because he knows he's now, not going to win. And it would be career suicide to go up against him. He's not crazy. Now listen, we're going to very smart. We are going to take a quick break. And when we get back, I've got a major warning for you, all right? And you really need to listen to this next segment. You've really got to watch out for something. And this thing with Mike Pence really, really shook me up today. So we're going to take our break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. And I've got this. I've got to tell you what to be on the lookout for. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. 
So you want to find the right web hosting company that fits your needs, but you don't know where to begin. You need to head over to CheapWebHostingOffer.com. They test and compare the best web hosting providers on the market to help people just like you choose from a very large web hosting offer and find the best solution as web hosting. And right now at CheapWebHostingOffer.com, you can save up to 70% off hosting plans and get a free domain. It's great for anyone who wants to start an online business, whether you're talking about a website or blog. Choosing the best web hosting is tough. There are hundreds of options, and every web hosting claims to be the best one out there. It can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. CheapWebHostingOffer.com do all the research for you. All you have to do is choose the right one for you. Go right now to CheapWebHostingOffer.com and save up to 70% off hosting plans and get a free domain. That's CheapWebHostingOffer.com. If you want lips that glimmer and sparkle, there's a lip kit on Amazon you will love. The shiny, long-lasting Lipstick Glitter Lip Kit. It comes in many colors, including Scarlet Red, Dynasty Gold, Sugar Nude, and Purple Rain, with more exciting colors on the way. These are long-lasting, fade-proof lipsticks that stay put and make your lips look fabulous. Create perfect, shiny lips that look gorgeous and shiny. You can buy the shiny, long-lasting Lipstick Glitter Lip Kit on Amazon at Amazon.com slash shops slash Hina Laulea. That's H-I-N-A-L-A-U-L-E-A. Are you a cool dad? Parenting and fatherhood meet self-help. In the book, Daddy is Cool Like That, available on Amazon. This important book is all about positive parenting, relationships with children, and being a super cool daddy. The perfect daddy and daughter moments in this heartwarming story will inspire you to celebrate your own family relationships. This book's charming illustrations will grab your attention and make the story about daddy even more heartwarming. This book is not only a great gift, but also a fantastic read for everyone. Daddy is Cool like that may be the book that gives you the incentive to be not only cool, but magnificent. This is a children's picture book that depicts a young family who has recently had their father diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Partly inspired by the author's family journey with the disease, it shows other young children and the families how to cope and to realize that there can still be moments of enjoyment to be shared, as well as the happy memories that follow. Daddy is Cool Like That, available on Amazon. Get your copy today. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, this warning that I was mentioning before the break, You've really got to be careful of this, okay? And and I've started to see this on YouTube and there was someone was posting on Truth Social about this earlier today. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fake maga that is really hitting every platform there is right now and what they're trying to do is every if you notice the whole tactic of the Republican establishment who's working with the Democrats, is to divide MAGA. This thing with Trump and DeSantis, which mm-hmm. is absurd. This thing with Pence carrying his speech today. And there's a lot of fake MAGA out there. And you've got to be very, very, very careful. One thing that they do, fake MAGA, they do, they do, I've been dealing with this before there was a MAGA movement, before there was a Tea Party. Yeah. There have always been disruptors, but, but a lot of people got into politics because of Donald Trump. So you've not been following these things for years and years and years. You may have been following them for seven or eight years, but you haven't been following them for as long as I have. Mm-hmm. So you may not be aware of this, okay? But these these fake MAGA people are very clever. One thing they do is they'll come up with outrageous stories that are not true to try to get – you and people like me and Kathy that have shows like this to talk about these ridiculous fake things to just credit you. That's one thing they do. Yeah, they'll make up outlandish conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Um, And they've done it in the past. You've got to be very careful. And some people jump on that and go with it, and and you really have to use your common sense. The fake MAGA's out there strong. Another thing they do is they like to take real MAGA people and start accusing them of not being MAGA. Right. Okay. And there's a lot of oh, yeah, there's a lot sure. of other things and dirty tricks you're going to see too. I'm not going to talk about all of them now because if I tell you all of them, 
they'll change tactics. Okay. Um, but sometimes you'll hear me talk about, I got a call on the radio a couple of days ago. Some of you may have heard this and, uh, it was a fake MAGA guy. Right. And I just asked him a question, you know, why do you like Trump? And there was a pause, you know, and I knew he was, you know, the seminar callers, you'll hear me refer to them. Mm -hmm. There are, there are so, and this is what's different. Okay. The, there, I, there have always been the fake Republicans, but they were Democrats pretending to be Republicans. And it never worked because they were not Republicans. They were Democrats pretending to be Republicans. And what they would do is have this – they would call me on the radio or they'd post something online, and they would post it from the perspective of a negative stereotype of Republicans they have in their mind. Um, but they, they were, it fell apart like that. The fake MAGA we're talking about are never Trumper Republicans that, that are Republicans and, and may have been Republicans their whole life, but they hate Trump for some reason, like these Lincoln people, right? Mm -hmm. So you really got to be careful. And what they're trying to do is turn brother against brother in the MAGA movement. I'm already seeing this happen. Yeah, but they're not successful. Well, not it's if you're going to happen. Not if you are aware of them, and you've got to be very what very I worry about aware of them. too is mm -hmm. these people like January 6th leading people into something that's not good. Well, okay, give me I'll give okay. you an example on and, January 6th. Yeah, Kathy. and you 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 experienced that at a, at a the Trump Let thing. Me, yep. You have to be very careful who you follow and don't follow the Pied Piper into the river. I, I give an example. At, on January 6th, right next to Ashley Babbitt, the, the person who filmed the murder of Ashley Babbitt was John Sullivan, that BLM guy who was wearing full MAGA gear. Exactly. So, you know, just because someone's wearing a MAGA hat or a Trump shirt, you know, or, or you're, uh, you see them on social media and they have Trump as their symbol right. or something, as their icon – don't necessarily believe them. Be very, very careful. There. Let me tell you something. These rallies mm -hmm. terrify them. And, and what happened over the weekend is why – there's a reason why they carry the Trump – or I'm sorry, the Pence speech when they don't carry the Trump speech. That straw poll at Turning Point USA, we were talking about on yesterday's show, where Trump was like, what, 60, 70 points ahead of yep. DeSantis? Yep. And, and I was telling you – what, what's so significant about that is it's in Florida. So DeSantis had home field advantage and it wasn't even close, right? You know, um, that scared these people. Oh, yeah. And, and I think that turning – All of this scared Yeah. Them. I think that turning point USA mm -hmm. poll is why they had Pence speech live on, on Fox News today. Now, oh, I wanted to uh, tell you guys about some things – that we've been doing here, okay, that you can find on my YouTube channel, Brian Craig on YouTube. Um, there's a lot, if you've noticed, I've been doing it with Kathy, because Kathy does a lot of this, okay? I, I, I can't do all this stuff. Kathy helps me do everything, okay? Kathy is Very like true. my, uh, I know this will sound insulting, but like my personal assistant, my yeah. um, <laughs> social media manager, and, it's true. and everything else. That's okay. And th this was Kathy's idea. We have started... Um, every night, every weeknight mm -hmm. from 11 p.m. Eastern time till 5 a.m. Eastern time, carrying the radio show, rebroadcasting on my YouTube channel, Brian yes. Craig on YouTube. So it's, a th it's three hours. So we run the three hours twice. So it's all night long, 11 p.m. Eastern to 5 a.m. Eastern, carrying the radio show. And it's audio only. It's not um, the video you watch of me in the mornings, the mornings before. And it's stereo quality studio, radio studio quality sound, and, um, I, and I think you'll enjoy it. And then I did something on Sunday uh, on a fluke. I just said, well, let me, let me do this. Let me try this. And we got an incredible response. I, mm -hmm. um, yeah, this was a good idea. I ran 12 hours of Trump Talk, 12 hours of the radio show. From the week before. From the week be prior. And I just ran 12 hours. On Sunday, noon to midnight Eastern, and with the, and by the way, when we do these, the overnight eleven p.m. to five a.m. and then the all day twelve hours of Trump talk on on um, on Sunday, we do that on YouTube with a live YouTube chat room going on, so you can be in the chat room mm -hmm. and socialize and everything else. And we've really gotten a, a tremendously positive 
response from people yeah. about doing this. So it's a great place to go yeah. and chat with other Trump supporters. Um, and, uh, yeah. you know, we're trying to give you as much content and bring people together as much as possible. But it's a great place to go to meet other Trump people and chat and uh, talk about Trump and yeah and uh, and you know say ninety nine percent are MAGA people. You get a troll there once in a while. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, but they but they we get, get to, we resolve that. They issue. get smoked out real quick. People can pick up on them real Absolutely. quick. And don't, you know, don't feed the trolls in the chat. But um, that's something we're going to be doing more and more of. And you know, we're we're coming up on the midterm election, so this is big. And then we got the presidential election. And what I really want to what I wanted to. Yeah. Is I you know I want to be like the manga show of record on YouTube and in podcasting, and I've just had this huge expansion on the radio, where we you know the radio the Steve Kane show that which I co-host in the mornings with Steve. We are now on six radio stations. Uh, five of them are FM. We're on from five a.m. till nine a.m. Monday through Friday. We've had we have more than quadrupled. Um, our listening audience with this expansion on local radio here in Florida and and some of the strongest pro Donald Trump parts of America, Martin mm-hmm. County uh, and um, uh, Stewart, Fort Pierce, Indian River County, and all those areas, and it's and it's it's absolutely amazing. So obviously, I'm trying to expand also on on YouTube. So make sure that you tell all your friends about my YouTube channel. Click on my notification bell on that channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Just search Brian Craig on YouTube and it will come up. Now I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters for all their support of the program. And you know, if you would um, like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description and uh, all Patreon supporters get commercial free editions of each and every podcast episode. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on air thank you on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie. Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, and Le Paul. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. So Liz Cheney really got exposed, and I was it was not easy for Brett Bear to do a follow-up on this, but he did. I'm not gonna play the audio, I'm just gonna tell you about it. Um I could play the audio, but I, I don't want to hear Liz Cheney's voice. Do you guys want to hear Liz Cheney's voice? Uh-huh. No. I mean, come on. By the way, is she married? Is there a Mr. Liz Cheney? I don't Cheney? know, but she looks like the saddest. Doesn't she? Person. She's clinically depressed. In the country. She I looks mean, clinically depressed. She looks so sad all the time. Well, yeah. I wonder if she is sad because she's going to lose her seat and she's destroyed her career. Or is she sad because she knows this hearing is going to go nowhere? Uh, or both? Is it a combination? Her whole life is coming crumbling. This is a prime example of Trump derangement syndrome. Oh yes, and how somebody has allowed it has allowed it's an obsession. It's you know what? I got a better word for it. It's an addiction. Mm. They're addicted to Trump, and addictions are not good. They're destructive. They destroy your life. They ruin the lives of the people around you. These people are addicted to Trump, and her addiction is going to destroy her career, and she's going to go home. She's probably going to leave Wyoming because I don't – you know, one of the things they say about her in Wyoming is she's never there. Mm -hmm. They're like she's in Washington all the Mm -hmm. time trying to bring down Trump. She's never here. And this one guy's like, why the hell would I vote for her? She's trying to destroy well, my favorite president. You know, a lot she's of never home. A lot of people don't know this. She's to, ridiculous. In the House of Representatives, you do not have to live in your district or state. Right. Yeah, but you should yeah. at least go there once in you a while. You should have to. And act like you well, care. Well, I, I read a column today, an opinion column about Liz Cheney. And I, they, they were talking about, at first this seemed crazy to me. But then I realized Liz Cheney's crazy. And this would make sense if you're a crazy person. They were talking about her Trump derangement syndrome yeah, and that she believed, you know, Liz Cheney has done nothing in her life. She's a legacy, right? Yeah, her, exactly. her daddy did a lot of terrible things. He was Bush one's defense secretary and Bush two's vice president. And he's a war criminal, right? Lying about the WMDs. Mm-hmm. And Liz, but Liz Cheney, who's never worked for anything in her life, everything's been handed to her. She thought the Republican party was being handed to her and that she was going to be one of the top 
few people that were leading the Republican Party in the future. Oh, well, she thinks she and, can run for president yeah, now. And then, she thinks she's got a shot. And then tr- uh, President Trump came in, and she's out. And um, this this article I was reading today was was talking about how Liz Cheney is so angry at Donald Trump because she lost her legacy entitlement of Republican Party control. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's some truth in that. But what happened to her by accident – Brett Baer Mm -hmm. on Fox News Sunday totally discredited Liz Cheney by accident. Yeah, he didn't even realize what he was doing. He hates he hates Trump like the plague. You know, he hates him. I shouldn't say that because these these leftist and never Trumpers love plagues now, right? Because they get all their control over us. They hate they hate. So Liz Cheney was on Fox News Sunday with Brett Baer, and he asked her about the twenty thousand troops that President Trump offered to Pelosi, and Mm -hmm. she. She said his own defense secretary testified to the committee that he did not – that's not true. He right. did not authorize troops for the Capitol. Right. And she says, if you don't believe me, go talk to his defense secretary. This sounds – well, this is, that this was, is making – reminding me of the Swift boat. Yeah, exactly, which I never yeah. – so, so that was Sunday, this, this past Sunday with Liz Cheney on Brett Baer. And Brett Baer apparently doesn't watch anything on Fox News that he's not on because in June, on June 6th, D-Day of all days, just just last month, Sean Hannity had on his show on Fox News, President Trump's defense secretary. Right. And he said that they had a meeting about January 6th security and then the meeting was over and then President Trump brought everybody in and said, hey, and came up, and it was President Trump's idea about the 20,000 soldiers to protect mm-hmm. the Capitol and Pelosi turned it down. And Liz Cheney has has been discredited by by Brett Baer. She was trying to be cute here. No, he did not sign an order for the 20,000 troops because Mm -hmm. it never got that far. He offered them and Pelosi refused them. In fact, I think he offered them twice and she refused them. So so it was never processed. And she's trying to do this thing. Well, no, 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 that's not true. He never ordered it. Well, because Pelosi turned it down, he offered it, right. and and so she never ordered. And the and she said, "Go and talk to the defense secretary; he'll tell you." And then they got you know. I played this on the radio yeah. yesterday, and he said, "So Brett Baer was forced to play the video of the defense secretary prior to the Liz Cheney interview he did, saying that what she says is not true." Uh, that must have and killed him. and Brett Baer looked. Like he had thrown up before he went on the air. He did not. Well, I wonder do how that. that went down behind the scenes because he was, he was I'm t- sure Hannity uh, pointed out to him. Everybody, well, I, people like me were talking about yeah. it all day. So he was embarrassed well, into it. Kathy. Clearly, he do, he doesn't watch Hannity's and, show. Well, I, <laughs> like like a lot of us, he must really hate Hannity now. I mean, that really, you think about it. I bet Hannity was so pissed because he's probably like, you know, it makes it look like you don't watch my show. Yeah. And you're not paying attention to what I'm talking about because you're totally, you know what I mean? So I, I think he, you know, had to make that correction. And you No, know, it was, if you saw it, he was really, he was hating it. Cause he, oh, I'm sure. You know. You know he hates Trump. Brett Baer. He hates Trump. Brett Baer did not want to discredit Liz Cheney, and he did. Oh, no. He wants to discredit Trump. And, you know, Liz Cheney, she's been kind of silent since that. Because she was so – she'll be back, you know. But she's – you haven't seen her as much since since all this went down. She was very active the last few days, and now all of a sudden she's gone underground. Their whole mission has been to discredit Trump, and and I don't know if there's going to be any more hearings. Oh, yeah, there but, are. But – oh, there are? Yeah. They, well, they say they're going to continue after the midterms. <laughs> I, I think Kevin McCarthy is going to shut it down. Give me a break. This is yeah. going absolutely nowhere. Well, They this, might keep yeah. it going in, in, until uh, – until Trump starts running in the next election. I mean, well, hopefully these people MAGA have, will control. Well, Congress, how's it going to so. work when her and Kinzinger are no longer in office? Because after the midterms, they cannot do it. They're going to be regular citizens like everybody else. So are they going to replace them with people? I don't think that's going no, to no, happen. No, no, no. Kevin McCarthy, if he's speaker, will discontinue that. Yeah, January. exactly. He'd or, have to, so. or he'll. It's not going to go anywhere. Or he'll continue the January 6th committee, put new people on it. And and really get to the bottom of what happened on January 6th, which is the last thing they want. Well, Biden's getting a lot of uh, <clears throat> online hate because he tweeted this picture, which has a spelling error, of how uh, people are spending $35 less per month for one person or $70 less per month for two cars than they would um, when prices were at their peak, what, two months ago? Yes. But people are quick to point out we're still paying 
that's still a dollar fifty more than what we were paying two years ago, the day he took yeah. office. So it's really ridiculous. It's like it's like when people jack up the prices of things and then they give you five bucks off and they're supposed to be like a hero. Um, nobody is buying this. They have tried. It's really funny to kind of watch them squirm, and they've really tried so hard to make high gas prices okay. It's not okay. <clears throat> okay, it's never going to be okay. You have diesel, which is so expensive, oh. and it's really affecting these truck drivers, which are the lifeblood of this country. Absolutely, so important to us. And people that drive uh, an hour, two hours a day to work, and they are just not having it. And the problem with them is uh, this is why they don't like Trump, because he was in office and he actually got things done. And he showed the country how good things can be. And they don't want you to see how good they want to keep things bad. They want to keep things messed up because they want you dependent on them all the time. Like Scott Pressler always said, the Democrats don't want to solve problems because they want to be the answer to the problems. And if they solve all the problems, nobody's going to go to them for help. That's right. And and Trump showed everybody how low gas can get. So that's now the that's the, that's the, what people are using as the standard mm-hmm. here. Well, I was paying a dollar fifty five just two and a half years ago, so I'm supposed to be happy that I'm paying four fifty now instead of four seventy five. That's right. That's crazy. It's ridiculous. Now, listen, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, there's much more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Back after this. Do you feel as if your life is just one big nightmare? Are you struggling to find the inner motivation to continue fighting for what you want? Don't fear, don't fret, and don't give up. The best is yet to come. The book from author Wendy Hang, Permission to Dream, from a refugee camp to owning a multi-million dollar real estate empire. Available on Amazon is a wonderful example of how to build upon the pain, overcome past heartaches, and make changes to live your best life, regardless of the turmoil that might rage inside of you. This must-read book will give you that nudge to succeed, the strength to push through, and the endurance to continue fighting until you reach your dreams. Embracing what happens to you and using it to fuel your inner fire can help close those dark doors behind you and open up a new future that is better and brighter than you could ever imagine. Start your own journey to greatness and order your copy of this amazing book, Permission to Dream, from a refugee camp to owning a multi-million dollar real estate empire from author Wendy Hang on Amazon. Cancer is a disease that affects almost everyone in some way. The book from author David Etheridge, Cancer Alternatives, available on Amazon, tells you what doctors won't, how you can prevent and fight cancer while restoring your health and immunity. Cancer Alternatives also discusses the damages that are caused by certain choices people make and how you can make the right choices to fight cancer effectively. Written from personal experience, Cancer Alternatives discusses a number of things that can affect the outcome of your cancer struggle, as well as some things that might even prevent cancer in the first place. This must-read book is not about traditional cancer treatment because that is the realm of medical practice. It is about why cancer develops, why it spreads, and what you can do to reduce the risk, presence, and spread of cancer. Cancer Alternatives from author David Etheridge. Order your copy on Amazon. As a single mother, author, and successful real estate agent, Cindy Bermudez Presgraves knows the value of hard work. While going through a divorce and raising two children on her own, she became an award-winning realtor. Consistently a top producer for her agency, she seeks to empower other women with her success story. In her new book, Becoming Successful in Real Estate, available on Amazon and Audible, she relates the highs and lows of real estate and offers a behind-the-scenes look at the life of a real estate agent. She's a certified luxury home marketing specialist, a member of the Million Dollar Club, and has earned the Top 5% Award for 2021. Now, she brings her experience and expertise to you in this must-read and inspiring book. If you're an agent or thinking of joining this amazing career, order your copy right now on Amazon and Audible, Becoming Successful in Real Estate, from author Cindy Bermudez Presgraves. 
We all understand the importance of adoption and how it can change lives for the better. Cool Breeze Communications is excited to announce Lucha and the Akeko, written and directed by Roger L. Edwards Jr. This is a short, inspirational animated film that strengthens positive narratives around fostering and adoption. In solidarity with advocacy groups like the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption, Cool Breeze has developed this media tool to raise awareness of the importance of foster care and adoption as a way to provide loving permanent homes for some of the most vulnerable children. Interweaving themes of motherhood and redemption, this award-winning film tells the heartwarming story of a woman who risks everything to reunite a girl with her mother and in the process, find space in her own heart to become one. To learn more about Lucha and the Akeko, visit the film's website, luchaandtheakeko.com. Lucha and the Akeko, written and directed by Roger L. Edwards, Jr., you are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Okay, so I just saw sad news. Tony Dow, who was... The older brother on Leave It to Beaver has died. Only seventy seven. Only yeah, seventy seven. I'd be older. I'd be well in his eighties, close to ninety. Well, Tony, he down. was pretty young on the show. I guess he was, he like was. A teenager. But you know, here's here's the thing, okay, about what what the left have done to our, our culture. You know, we talk about all this craziness on TikTok and everything else. You know, Leave It to Beaver, and there were other shows too. They don't make shows like this anymore. And what I mean is. If you go back, you know, this this passing of Tony Dow, you go back to Leave It to Beaver. And, you know, um, I don't even know if you know this, Kathy. I met Tony Dow once. I think you told me that. I'll tell you this. I met Tony Dow, and I'll tell you how I, I met him real quick. At Universal Studios Orlando, Florida, when it first opened, I don't remember if it was the late 80s or early 90s, but it was on that. It was like somewhere around 90 to 91 or 2. They used to actually film movies and television shows at Universal Orlando. Yeah. And I went to Universal Orlando with a couple of friends of mine. And we were walking around and the park was brand new and it was the middle of the week and there was hardly anyone there. And they had sound stages where they were filming things. And, and I was with this one friend of mine, Ed, who was crazy. He said, well, let's just go walk back there. And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, we're going to, you know. So we walked back on this sound stage, and they were filming. There was a syndicated television show that was very short lived based on the film with Adrian Barbeau called Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing, the series. Yeah. And we went back there, and it was being directed by Tony Dow. Oh. And um, they just thought we were on the crew. We sat there and watched oh the film gosh. with Tony Dow from Leave It to Be. I don't think you've ever told me this story. Yeah, well, I've done things you don't know about, Kathy. I guess so. Like that breaking into the set of Swamp <laughs> Thing with Tony Dow. This is new to me. And, uh, you know, I didn't like have a conversation with Tony Dow, but I was, I was as close to Tony Dow as I am to you while he was doing the thing. And we even helped him move some stuff around. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's pretty cool. I've never told you about that before. No, never. <laughs> yeah, they thought we were like. Um, I don't know what you call it, the guys that move stuff around on the set. Yeah, I don't you know. You know, stagehands or yeah, something. Stage hands, yeah, stagehands. Yeah. I was like, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's pretty cool. I know, it's pretty cool. Well, but anyway, this, yeah. I'm going to tell you about this, though. though yeah. the, okay, but this is, this is how, <laughs> I, you know, I'd forgotten about that, uh, actually, until just now as I was talking about. It's been a long time. But what they have done to our culture is, is disgusting, okay? You, you go back to that era of television, the Leave it to Beaver era. And, you know, leftists will tell you, oh, yeah, racist and sexist and all this. When Beaver got into trouble with his brother, Tony Dow, who did they go to for wisdom? The dad yep. and the mom, but the dad, mostly the dad, the dad yeah. you know, and, you know, and, you know, they had shows like Father Knows Best. They would never do a show like that. To, you, you watch any television show or movie today. The dads are always idiots. Um, they're fools. That's been a trend since the 70s, since the women's live movement. Yeah, and it's, it's because had a the bad shows effect. in the 50s had the, the, except for, well, even Ricky Ricardo was the voice of reason. Lucy was the crazy one. 
the the shows in the fifties. That's right. The husband, the, the uh, husband, the men were the voice of reason. The ones you went to, father knows best. All this stuff, except for maybe the Munsters, you know. But anyway, that's that's you know they're well. That was a little men. later. Yeah, that's true. That was in the but starting, I think, mostly in the seventies was like you know you had Archie Bunker who was you know kind of a clown in a lot of ways. George Jefferson. Loud, bombastic, funny, but fools. But but yeah, you know they were they were like the butt of a lot <laughs> yeah. of jokes, and I think that's when things really shifted. I always say that Vietnam was a huge cultural turning point in this country, and I think if Vietnam never happened, I think the country would be a lot more family oriented, and you wouldn't have you know you wouldn't have had these hippies. Mm-hmm. You would, and I, and I think the women's lib movement. Although I understand where some of their complaints were coming from, they were dealing with a lot of sexism and things like this. But it really, in a lot of ways, destroyed the family unit. And the government came in with welfare and programs and all this stuff, and took the place of the father and the husband. And that's when you really saw this trend of making f- of the, the the man being the goof and the butt yeah, of the jokes and right. and and the dumb one that mm-hmm. that that everybody you know yeah. and, and no longer the one and, everybody and turns it's like that in almost every movie every television show even commercials if there's a commercial with a heterosexual family in it anymore now uh, one other thing i wanted to mention this is just starting to happen now uh, they got this thing going that nancy pelosi is going to visit taiwan now i, I know what is the point okay, of this m- most of you that listen to this program you know what's going on okay there's China, as we know it, that's the, controlled by the CCP, the, mm-hmm. the Chinese Communist Party. And then there's Taiwan. Taiwan is like free. Taiwan does not call themselves Taiwan. They call themselves China. They're free mm-hmm. China. After the communists took over, the freedom-loving Chinese fled to inform their own country. Okay, And so there's always this threat that China is going to overtake Taiwan. So – Nancy Pelosi has not officially announced she's going to Taiwan yet, but they've put it out there. And Newt Gingrich even said she needs to go. She needs to go. The last Speaker of the House, who cares what the speakers do, right? But the last Speaker of the House to go to Taiwan was Newt when he was Speaker. And they're talking in the news that Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan would signal to Taiwan that we are behind them and signal to China we are with Taiwan. That's a load of crap. I'm watching this discussion today. Newt Mm -hmm. Gingrich, let me tell you. Newt Gingrich. I'll tell you this about Newt Gingrich. We all were big – we're so betrayed by these people all yeah. the time, right? Yeah. Newt Gingrich was responsible for the Republican Revolution that brought in the, the Republican majority in the Congress first mm-hmm. time and I think it was 40 years. Yeah, I remember that. We control both houses, right? He was the speaker and Bob Dole was the majority leader in the Senate. And then – you know, some scandals and things happened, and he, and he left Congress, right? And then what did this guy do that was telling us he was the true conservative? He went and did a global warming commercial with Nancy Pelosi. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. He, did this, he did this global warming commercial with Nancy Pelosi, and then that was it. I was done with Newt. But this is the thing, okay? Newt Gingrich and, and, and these media people and politicians are starting to talk, oh, Nancy needs to go, so Taiwan knows and China knows. There is no way this country under the current leadership is going to defend Taiwan against China. The president and the speaker of the house are employees of China. The, 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 the Democrat Party and a lot of Republicans like Mitch McConnell are owned by China, the CCP. So how are they going to stand up to their employer? No, not they're not. Happen. So so this whole thing of standing up to China with Pelosi visiting Taiwan, it's all fake. It's all staged. If if China moves in tomorrow or tonight, Nancy Pelosi and Biden they'll release some statements opposing it. But they, but secretly they want it to happen well, because yeah, they they work it. for this China. This is all planned. This yeah. is all planned and staged. That's they're right. All, they're all. This is all part of the plan. They need a reason. Exactly. So this is giving them a reason. And well, yeah. and shame on Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich knows more about this than we do. And and for him to act like the news Pel- is very yeah. scripted. He's Everything a terrible on person. TV is fake. Very scripted. And uh, put in a nice little package uh, for you to look at and and to sway public opinion. And whenever something big happens, and you see this more as you get older, there's always like something like a catalyst or a precursor to making that occur. And you have to wonder how many times is that orchestrated and money exactly and and causing that to happen. You know what I mean? Giving it. A cause. <clears throat> well, the White House economic advisor just came out and oh. said, um, and I quote, this is how they're rationalizing it now. 
Obviously, the high prices are hitting Americans very hard in a way that is different than some places that are facing famine, for example. So now they're comparing us to third world countries that have no food, <laughs> that we should be thankful that we at least don't yeah. have a famine going. W- are these people on crack? Well, yes. there is. Yeah, they are. But yeah. this Literally. is how they rationalize and how they gaslight you. They, they, they tell you, you shouldn't be upset. You should be happy we don't have a famine in this country like they do in, in hey, Sudan or do, wherever, Africa or whatever the hell. I'm going to ask this to you in the Ridiculous. audience. And you can leave a response to this in the comments of this episode. I'm, I'm serious about this question, okay? You know, what, what Kathy just said, Hunter's on crack, right? A few other people, I'm sure. Do you think that Joe Biden has ever taken a hit off of Hunter's crack pipe? I'm not going to touch that one. You know, Walmart... Um, took a big hit. Their um, their their shares uh, went down ten percent, and oh, the their profits are bad. way way down. And oh. there's there's a couple reasons. Some of it's this recession we're in, but you know when when yeah, Walmart canceled Mike Lindell yeah. a few weeks ago, you know Walmart has had this attitude that General Motors used to have that they're too big to fail, That's too right. big to fail. That's right, and. You know, Amazon came along. You think that would have been a wake up call like Barnes and for Walmart? Yeah, Walmart. They put out all the you know Blockbuster put all out all of the independent video stores. There's always a bigger fish. Barnes and Noble put out of business all then the Netflix independent booksellers. Blockbuster, Netflix, and then you know, and Amazon. And now Netflix is in trouble. Yeah, and these things don't last forever. Walmart, Walmart shut down stores because of Amazon, but then they got their cockiness back, and they canceled Mike Lindell. And yeah. I'm telling you. The the fact that now, now listen, I will say I have bought baby formula at Walmart because we've had to for our friend. Kathy's online right now looking for more baby. Well, formula. this is the second person we've bought baby formula for. My best friend is a, a grandmother again and her daughter. I said, send me um, I what happened is I had read an article how there's going to be more baby food shortages coming. So I sent her the article and I, her, ba- her granddaughter's like a month old. And I said, tell me the kind of formula she's using. And she's using this Walmart brand formula. So she sent me the, the link and I bought two tubs of it. And, and lucky I did because an hour later they were completely sold out. So we're shipping that to her. We keep, we're going to ship it this week for sure. But she has some already. There, she's not yeah, like so, without. So but we're we, shipping that. That's the have, only thing we've bought. There. We have bought the baby formula at Walmart because that's the that's only place brand. we can get it during the baby yeah, formula shortage. Right. But we have bought nothing else nothing from else. Walmart. And, and Which let is me, unusual And let us. me tell you something. We've got two super Walmarts a mile from each other. Believe yes, it or not, two in our neighborhood. In our neighborhood, and they're nice, and and they're both super WalMarts. And I used to go to them all the time for everything. Things are a lot cheaper. I um, it's not easy to do because stuff well, is cheaper there. Other than these baby formula purchases that we had to make for the baby formula shortage, yeah. I've not shopped at Walmart since they discontinued my pillow. And let me tell you, when I went in and bought yes. the baby formula, I bought nothing else. And and let me tell you, that's that's not easy for me to do when I go to Walmart because oh, there's yeah. things I need and it's yep. cheaper there. It is and cheaper. I didn't do. It. And the Walmart profits tanking, no question in my mind, have a lot to do with them canceling Mike Lindell. And absolutely, and I know you guys like us are not shopping at Walmart and because of this. And the Mike Lindell MAGA Patriots of America, that is the core customer of Walmart's all over this absolutely. country. Absolutely, I think that was a colossal mistake. And you know, because I, the majority of their Customers, I would agree, are definitely not the liberal elites. I wish I had this. Judge shops at Walmart. I wish I had this story when I interviewed Mike Lindell, um, because I'm there's there is no when when does Walmart take a hit like this? This is this is a direct result of people boycotting Walmart. Yeah, and let me tell you, I'm going to continue our boycott of Walmart. Other than this baby formula, because like you said, Kathy's one friend. And you're not really into boycotts, but for some reason, this is really. I am not. No. No, I'm not. Well, you know, the thing with Walmart and Mike Lindell, it's a lot like Fox News with Pence that we were talking about at the beginning of the show. These these, This is all a business. Fox is a business. Walmart's a business. And they are successful businesses because we are their consumer. And when you alienate your customers – when you alienate your consumer, you know, that's a that's a betrayal. And I, I, I take it personally. 
So while I'm done with Walmart, other than the baby formula, I'm not buying anything at Walmart. Yeah. And 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 I would go to Walmart all the time. If I'm fixing something around the house, I'd yeah, run out to time. Walmart. It's right across the street. Now I go to Lowe's and pay more for it right. than I would pay at Walmart, yeah. you know, just because of their Mike Lindell. So I think that this Walmart, their stock price has dropped about 10%. I think that you guys out there that have stood up these last few weeks – uh, for Mike Lindell, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, Walmart announced a few weeks back that they are discontinuing the sale of My Pillow products. They're the largest. They didn't retailer. have to do that. Somebody, because this just happened, and people, out of the blue, people were getting rid of his products years ago. Out of the stores, like Bed Bath and Beyond, that was like two years ago. QVC, all of a sudden, out of the blue, somebody put pressure on Walmart or threatened Walmart to. Get you know probably somebody in the swamp went on a rare occasion and shopped at Walmart and saw them in the checkout line and had a complete well, conniption. I'll tell you, yeah, I and um, said we need to handle this. I think it was Joe Biden. Joe Biden, when he was vice president, he uh, Obama appointed him the gun czar after Sandy Hook, and he got um, Joe Biden blackmailed Walmart. Yeah. Uh, and got them to discontinuing the uh, the the. Um, so he did the same the thing: guns with the and ammo. And he did that. Remember, you used to hear about the unions always harassing Walmart to yeah. unionize the workforce. Biden got the unions off of Walmart's back if they would discontinue the gun and ammo sales, and they did. They were the largest gun and ammo sale- seller in the country because they have so many stores. They do sell some ammo still, but they don't sell yeah. the guns. They don't sell as much ammo as they used to. And I think Biden had that connection, and they threatened to, to sick the unions on him again, and they got them to discontinue my pillow. Seems so. And this tells you really the strength of MAGA. I mean, think about this. They, without thinking about it, Walmart called up Mike Lindell personally. He told me about this um, on, on the interview. I'm, I'm sure many of you heard it. And they called him up and said, "We're not carrying your product anymore." That's it. And they they did it. And Mike Lindell went public, and people like me told you about it, yep. and, and we've not been shopping at Walmart. And the next thing you know, their stocks dropped 10%, and they have a huge hit in their retail sales. That shows you the power of MAGA. I hate to boycott places because it affects the employees, yeah. and I really am not comfortable doing that because it's really not their fault. They're just going to work and trying to, especially now during this economy, I hate to do it, but- I'm starting to realize, and I don't want to be like a liberal where the ends justifies the means and be all Machiavellian about it, but sometimes you do have to make a statement, and with these companies, it does have an impact. Like, look at Disney. Now there's stories coming out that they're firing all their woke executives because they are taking such a hit with their brand in the parks. You were, you, the last time you went to Disney and did your last vlog there, it was a Saturday, and it was half full. On a Saturday in the summer, it's usually wall to wall people. Um, even though it's hot as hell, it's it's like Hades up there. But um, you know, these companies are really starting to wake up to how wokeism is so destructive for their bottom line. And as much as I hate to boycott, and as much as I'm not into boycotting, and I'm really not, yeah, I'm but not but uh, sometimes you sometimes do you you have to. You know, you get to a point where you're like, well, I've got to make some kind of a stand here. So there's other options. We'll shop at Target. Well, you know, you know, people listen, have issues with Target, listen, but i got to buy my listen, stuff from look, somewhere. Look, Netflix you know? made some adjustments. Now Walmart That's right. has taken it. And I don't think Walmart realizes that this hit they just took, this big financial hit, huge hit, huge hit, okay, no, 10% is, huge. is because of Mike Lindell's canceling that they did. They're going to know it because all of us are going to let them know it. Now, I, um, it shows you how much his products were a big part of their bottom that's line. That's right. Because now that they're not there, they've taken well, a big hit, well, too. Well, they're showing that we are not shopping there. Right. Yeah. We are not shopping there. And yeah, you've got combo. to let it be known. Listen, we're all out of time for today, but we will be back next time. Now, now again, don't forget, go to MyPillow.com, that MyPillow 3-inch mattress topper, 50% that's off. That's a good deal. With our promo code at checkout, Kane, K-A-N-E. Support Mike Lindell and his fight against this cancel culture and his support of our great president. Use our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, yep. and get that three-inch MyPillow mattress topper. And then call and tell me about it, and uh, maybe you'll make your way into a commercial. That'd be great. Yeah. Hey, listen, we'll talk to you next time, all right? I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs> 
How you do anything is how you will do everything. The Jiu-Jitsu Mindset isn't just a podcast about Jiu-Jitsu. This is a podcast about your life. Because when you improve your Jiu-Jitsu, you improve your life. On this show, they discuss all things Jiu-Jitsu and the philosophy behind it. It's so much more than you think. Host Peter M. Dealey Jr. and Professor Lucas Rubo feel that lessons on the mat are life lessons. It's time to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Welcome to the Jiu-Jitsu Mindset. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.